Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. This is part two of our Blend Shape Maya 2016 addendum. Uh, we've already gone over, uh, if you look in the deform menu, we've already gone over Blend Shape Add and all these options here, which included specifying nodes, adding in between targets, and so on. Let's go back to our deform menu here. And the deform menu, by the way, can be found in many different menu sets. We have this is the modeling menu set that I'm in right now, but if you look in the uh, rigging menu set, you can find a form right here, as well as say the animation menu set. You can find anim deform, which has a short list, but then you can open full deform menu, which opens up all of the menus options that are in the normal deform menu. I'll just go back to modeling for now, and the form edit blend shape. We have the edit section of the menu and under that is blend shape. I'm just going to break this off. So add, we've already gone over. Next is remove. If we go into the options for remove, you can see this looks very familiar to the previous video. We're talking about specifying nodes and specify target. So specify node again works the same as with the add option where if you have multiple blend shapes in your scene you will need to specify which blend shape you want to remove a target from. So this is remove blend shape target options. Just says remove here in the menu but just so you know for sure it's removing a target blend shape from your base object. So an object can have multiple blend shape uh, deformers applied to it so you'll need to specify which one you want to remove a target from. So for example, let's go to create and I'll just create a polygon sphere. Scale that up a little bit. And I'll hide the grid. Like so. So this will be our base sphere like we did in the other video. I'll control D to duplicate it. Move this duplicate over here. This will be a target. And for the target we need to change the shape so that we have something to blend into. So I'm just going to grab a couple uh, edge loops like I did before and just scale those like so. So we have our base and our target. So I'm going to duplicate the base again, Control D. Let's have a second target and this time I'm just going to grab some random vertices and move them over here. So we've got these two target shapes. So I'm going to select this object, hold down shift and select my base, go to deform, create blend shape. This is different than edit blend shape down here. This is create blend shape. Go into the create blend shape options and edit reset settings to make sure I have my default values and hit create. And then I'll select my other target object, hold down shift and select my base sphere. And again, go to deform, create blend shape like so. So now I have blend shape 1 and blend shape 2 over here in my channel box inputs. So if I click on blend shape 1, I have this P sphere uh, channel. Middle click and drag, you can see how it blends from this perfect sphere to the target shape like so. And then we have blend shape 2 with P sphere 2 here and I can middle click and drag its value and change the shape like so. So I have two blend shapes attached to this one sphere. So if I want to remove one, remove options, I would need to specify the node. If I check specify node, then existing nodes and blend shape node options here become available. The, blend, the existing nodes pull down menu lists all of the blend shapes that are currently in my scene, which in this case now there's blend shape 1 and blend shape 2. So if I choose blend shape 1, the one I chose will be added to the blend shape node uh, input box here. So you're really only changing the existing node uh, menu selection which changes the blend shape node value. And so whichever one of these you choose you will remove a blend shape target from. So if I select this target, hold down shift and select my sphere, and I have blend shape 2 selected in my specify node option here which is not the blend shape associated with this target shape and then I choose to apply the removal, nothing really happens because this target is not associated with blend shape 2. If I choose this target, hold shift, select my sphere, and I have blend shape 2 selected, which is what this target is associated with, and hit 
apply. You see here under the inputs for blend shape 2. Now I have the envelope slider, but I no longer have that target channel. For blend shape 1, you see I have this P sphere 3 channel here, which actually changes the shape, and then the envelope uh, channel above it. For blend shape 2, however, all I have is envelope. The target has been removed. The blend shape node is still applied, so I could go to the add blend shape and choose uh, here are my specified nodes. I can still choose blend shape 2 as a blend shape node I want to add a target to. So it removes the target, it doesn't remove the blend shape itself. So that's what remove does. And a specified node simply means that if you have multiple blend shape nodes applied, you will specify which one you want to remove the selected target. And then you have specify target. So as you might know, you can have multiple targets in one blend shape. Right now we, we applied these two targets individually, which applied two separate blend shapes to the sphere. So I'm just going to delete these targets, select my sphere, and delete its history. So with the history deleted, the blend shape nodes are now, are now deleted also, and are no longer applied to our sphere. So I'm going to create a couple more spheres now and make new target shapes. I'm just going to select some vertices and do some wacky things with them. Select some edge loops. And we'll do something like this. There we go. So now I have these two shapes. So before we applied this one shape as a blend shape and then we selected this one and applied it as another blend shape. Instead, now what I'm going to do is select both of them at the same time, hold shift, and select my sphere. So now both of these targets are going to be applied to the sphere as one blend shape with multiple targets. So with those selected in that order, deform, create blend shape. So now when I select my sphere and go here in the channel box, you'll see I have the one blend shape node with two target channels. So P sphere 2, P sphere 3. So now, as you can guess, when you go to the remove option here, you'll need to specify a target. So if we check to specify a target, we can then add a target name here. And the target name is essentially the name of this channel name. In this case, we have P-Sphere 2 and P-Sphere 3. So let's say I want to get rid of the P-Sphere 2, which is what this sphere is called, the P-Sphere 2 target from my sphere. You see I have blend shape p-sphere 2 target which right here which is the shape looks kind of like a helmet or something so with this target selected hold shift and select my base sphere go to remove options specify target so if I type in p sphere make sure I spell it right uh, 2 p-sphere 2 and hit apply so now if I select my base sphere and go into the channel box under the blend shape 1 channel here, you'll have input, you'll see we have only the P-Sphere 3 uh, blend shape target now. P-Sphere 2 has been removed. So that's if you have multiple targets applied to your blend shape, you can specify which target is being removed by typing in the name of that target. And that is the remove blend shape options. So let's uh, let's keep this as it is for now and look at swap. We have swap options. And here you see we're very familiar territory with specify node. And you have existing nodes, which is currently the one. And then the blend shape node selected is the one in the list. And again, if we had multiple blend shapes, you would have multiple blend shapes in this list to choose from. So that's the only thing that's in this uh, list. So if you only have one blend shape in your scene, you actually don't even need to use the options. If you have only when you have multiple uh, blend shapes, would you need to specify which node you are applying the swap to? So for this command, let's go to our Windows Animation Editors blend shape here. And you see here we have our blend shape one node with our two target sliders. I've applied, I undid the P sphere two removal. We have P sphere two and p-sphere 3, like this. So we want to swap these targets. So how does that work? Let me just kind of arrange things so you can hopefully see them. 
So we actually don't really need to worry about the base for this particular option, this particular command. We have psphere 3 here is the first one in the list, and psphere 2 is the second one in this list. If we chose them in the opposite order, if I chose psphere 2 first, hold shift and choose psphere 3, then over here in my edit blend shape menu and choose swap, and keep your eye down here in the blend shape uh, animation editor here. 3 is on the first row, 2 is in the second, and choose swap. You'll see simply that piece for 2 now is at the front of the class, is the first slider, and piece for 3 is the second one. You can choose swap again and they go back and forth. So piece for 2, piece for 3, or hit swap. Now we have piece for 3 is first, and piece for 2 is second. So you've swapped those two targets' positions in our blend shape slider order in the blend shape editor here. Okay, next in our list on our edit blend shape menu is bake topology to targets. Now this does not have any options associated with it, it's simply a command you can just click and apply. But what it does is it will bake the topology of our base shape to the topology of our target shapes. Now currently we haven't made any changes to this sphere so there's no reason to apply this baked topology to targets. The reason why you would you the reason why you would do it is if after I've applied a blend shape to my sphere and I have these two target blend shapes for it, then I decide, you know what, I'm going to change the geometry on my sphere after I've applied blend shapes to it. For example, if I were to choose a couple of edge loops here and go to edit mesh delete edges. So now I have, I have deleted those edge loops on my base sphere. So if I go over here to blend shape 1 and I have my p-sphere 2 and p-sphere 3 channels that I can control the blending of those two target shapes, you can see that now my p-sphere 2 target shape does not really match what's going on here because I've changed the geometry. Let me go back here to p-sphere 3 and do that too. You can see very different between my target and base. So when that happens I can simply select my sphere and say bake topology to targets and it changes the shape of my targets now to correspond to what will happen when the blend shape occurs. So you'll see the shape of my two targets have changed. They no longer have those edge loops as well. So whenever I apply the blend shape they match to what's going on here. And then I can go over here to my target and say, you know what, now that I've made that change, I'm going to change my target shape a bit, for example, to get that helmet look like so. And by changing the target, you automatically update what shape the sphere turns into when that blend shape is applied completely. And that's what Baked Topology to Targets does. And then we have Edit Normalization Groups. This again doesn't have any options associated with it, but whenever we select my base object and choose Edit Normalization Groups, we get this window, which is our Edit Normalization Groups window here. And we have our two blend shape targets listed. And if we had more, of course, they'd all be listed here. And you can assign them a Normalization Group ID number. Now it's not really important in this particular video what that ID number does, but in whenever you need that ID number, this is where you would set it. So I can change piece sphere 3 to 1 and piece sphere 2 to 2, for example. And once you've done that, you can say you have these group numbers that you've assigned to your targets. And you have group 1 use weights, group 2 use weights. So let's undo that a little bit. Let's go back to Zero, 0 for our psphere 2 and 3 normalization group IDs. So they no longer have normalization group IDs applied. If I apply a 1 here and a 2 here for example and then I choose my base object and go to the form paint weights blend shape options you see I have norm 1 and norm 2 here in my target list. So this norm is the normalization group ID 1 and 2 here applied and that is what edit normalization groups allows you to do. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit more about blend shapes and I will talk to you later.